Welcome to the Antiparos Cave, and what a beautiful view from the island of Antiparos. Finally, we arrive to the cave of Antiparos, the most deep and vertical cave in all Greece and Europe. This cave is the island's number one tourist attraction, and it is also a great way to beat the heat of Greece. The cave is 85 meters deep and 411 steps down. In 1673, a French ambassador to the Ottoman Empire visited the cave for three days with numerous companions and celebrated Christmas Day here. Visitors carved their names into the cave, including Lord Byron and the first modern king of Greece, Otto, which you'll see in a bit. Oh, this is sick. During the German occupation, part of the cave was destroyed. The cave was renovated extensively in the second half of the 20th century using funds from the EU to create barriers, building adequate steps, and installing lighting. So this actually used to be the worshiping grounds for Artemis, who is the goddess of hunting. Also by legend, the Cyclops Polythemus used to live here as well. You don't remember who he is? He is the one who created the different tools for the gods and the goddesses. One of those tools being the bolt for Zeus. The light, I can see the light. It is a lot hotter when you get out of the cave. It's nice and cool down there. It's time for the beach. It's always a great idea to pack a pair of swim goggles with you. By the way, you can take a ferry from Paros to Antiparos. The trip is short and is only about 15 minutes. You can even bring your car or quad for about $6. Amazing, a lot of fishes. And sea rich. Sea rich. Sea urchin. Sea urchin. How do you say it in Italian? Ricci di mare. Ricci di mare. So good and so nice. Except if you step on them. back to shore to check out the village. I'm convinced that a frappe is for tourists and a frozen cappuccino are for the Greeks. I agree. Antiparos has been growing in popularity. Tom Hanks loved visiting this island so much that he purchased a home here. As we were heading back to Paros, I spotted these kite surfers. So we had to check it out. Look at these guys literally flying through the air. Before we came to Greece, we didn't know how windy it would be. The tourists probably hate it, but these guys love it. This guy was easily the best one. Not only that, but he was also probably the best looking. Oh no, wait, hold on, what's he doing? Oh no. Fragi. Okay, we gotta go. Here's a wedding, we're gonna be coming back to this later. But first, we're heading to dinner. Here we are for the domaris, which are stuffed vine leaves with rice inside. Has a different flavor. Did you say it was as acidic? A little bit acid? Yeah. Yeah. Let's try it. I think let me try it with It's good. I prefer it with the Suzuki. I always like Saganai. It's so 
Oh, and it looks like we have our tomato jelly. Oh yeah. Our favorite. Very good. It's not too soft of a cheese. Can't go wrong with warm cheese. We finished up our dinner and went for some dessert. It's our last night in Paros and we're gonna finish it with our favorite desserts that we had here on day one. Can't wait. on the outside, soft on the inside, the chocolate is hot. Remember that wedding? Well, looks like it's going well. We were able to enjoy the seaside fireworks from their ceremony. Let's go and check out the wedding. This beautiful wedding was in the middle of Nausa and even if you weren't invited, you were still able to watch and enjoy this atmosphere of this wonderful summer night. And it was really like Paros was saying goodbye to us on our last night. It was a magical evening, even though we weren't even part of this wedding. But our time here in Paros has come to an end, and we have nothing bad to say about this island and this experience. So make sure you do add this island to your itinerary when you're planning your trip to Greece.